Well, good afternoon. Uh, have uh, another, now that I've cleaned off the lab and everything and I get the pieces, I have a bit of gear that uh, I need to do a repair on. Um, this is an E4436B uh, ESG DP series uh, signal generator. Um, this I picked up uh, in uh, uh, an auction. It was property of Motorola. But it had the calibration out to the middle of this year. Um, and it was in mint condition uh, when I bought it. Now, I've got uh, some photos uh, here that you'll see. Uh, and I'll put in the originals so that you can actually see them. Uh, the company that I contracted to uh, ship the units, basically just uh, whoever their contractor in that location was, he just uh, threw them in a box, put uh, no padding in between them, and uh, just taped them to a, uh, use those metal straps to strap it down to a, uh, uh, a pallet. So as you can see uh, in this first photo, you know, you can see the, uh, where the two units just sat. And these are some things that we'll show uh, later. They just sat next to each other, uh, wearing out on the corners. You can see over here, you know, all the discoloration and the damage from where it's banged together. Um, you know, if you uh, have a look uh, down in the bottom here, you can see this fine brown gray dust. And that's actually the plastic that has uh, worn off uh, the units. And then some of these cables were trapped in uh, under the units as well as logic analyzers, and those cables were damaged. Uh, and then on this unit here, the 4436B, you can see the damage that was done to the two uh, uh, the two BNC connectors. Uh, this one, I think, is probably going to be okay, the, the middle one, the data clock, but the, the symbol uh, sync is completely destroyed. And it actually punched a hole in the side of one of the logic analyzers. So, uh, you know, not naming names, but the packing company made uh, good on, uh, made good on the, uh, uh, the offer, on the, the product, basically. Um, and made up for their mistakes and I got uh, the replacement part to go and fix this guy. So uh, we're going to go put that uh, part in and we'll take a look at uh, the units in operation um, and uh, see if they're, uh, if they're working still. So first things first, let's uh, turn this guy on. Okay, so we've booted up now drink of choice uh, for today is uh, more coffee out of my schnauzer mug. And um, we can see that there's no, uh, there doesn't appear to be any, uh, any errors. So we should be uh, reasonably okay. Let's see if there's a instrument info, diagnostic info. Attenuator cycles, 333,000. Hmm, an attenuator is probably not um, going to be uh, uh, in calibration very much longer. They usually, they tell you that stuff because they, uh, that way, you know, you know when the, the attenuators need to be replaced. Um, looks like it's got a bunch of, looks like there's a bunch of stuff in there. Page down, nope, page up. So um, I've got uh, uh, motherboards installed, you know, dual arbitrary boards. So basically, you can you know create uh, uh, dual waveforms. It's got an IQ uh, signal generator. I bought wanted this because I don't have an IQ generator uh, here, and I wanted something to work with the E forty four six forty four oh six A, and uh, uh, this guy was going to be the the business here. Uh, so it seems like things are on there. So now what I think we should do is just hook it up uh, and give it a bit of a uh, give it a bit of a test. Let's just hit preset. Okay, so here's the 8902A and um, it is uh, I've done a video on it. It's a measuring receiver and what that enables us to do is to get 
uh, a bunch of parameters about uh, signals that are coming in. What I have here is a uh, uh, 18 gigahertz uh, uh, sensor. This is an 11792A. Uh, and this use, go, works in partnership with uh, the 8092A and then a microwave converter. And if we just zoom down, you'll see the, the converter and then the uh, local oscillator that I'm using, which is an 8673B. And um, what that uh, enables me to do is to measure signals that are outside of the normal range. The 8092A's normal range is uh, 0 to 1300 megahertz, but with this added to it, uh, you can go up to 26 uh, if you have the, the optioned uh, sensor here that has the 26 gigahertz connector on it. Anyway, let me go put this on our unit here, and then we'll start you know, checking some of those, uh, those values. So, you know, by default it goes to uh, three gigahertz. So let's, uh, let's do that. And we'll take automatic operation and frequency. Oh, I need to turn the RF on. And so, you know, we're getting you know, pretty accurate uh, uh, frequency out of that uh, unit at 3 gigahertz. And let's take a look at the RF power. I had previously run it up on the, uh, the power thing. So 0 dBm, it's pretty bang on accurate there. Let's uh, drop that down a bit. Let's say minus 20 dBm. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, let's return it to zero dBm. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, I want to go and measure some of the other modes on this. So, and now we'll want to turn on 27.3 special again. Oh, 27.1 is actually what we want because we're going to re-enter uh, the offset there. So we're getting our... Anyway, so let's now go in and set our AM modulation. And we're going to turn that off uh, on. We're going to set an AM depth of, say, 25%. Now let's hit AM and see what we see. All right, we see 26% there, 26.5%. I don't know what the, I'd have to look up the spec sheet to see if what the, the accuracy is. We can look at the audio frequency. That's uh, 400K, let's go change that. Let's make that, you know, one kilohertz. You know, so it's pretty accurate on, on that. Uh, let's go check, uh, let's go check the uh, uh, FM modulation. And so, we're going to go do is we're going to go back here to FM. We'll drop ourselves on our calibrator again. So let's uh, turn off our AM modulation. Let's turn our FM modulation on. And if we go to FM, we should see one kilohertz. We up that a bit, let's say that's 25 kilohertz. Yep, you know, and again, the audio frequency for that you know, is what we'd expect. You know, I could change that to say 800 hertz. Oh, eight, eight kilohertz. No. Uh, yeah. All right. And so let's go and do, let's turn that off. Let's do phase modulation. Set it up for one uh, radian. 
and go check uh, phase modulation here. And you know, we can set that to say five radians. Yep, we're looking reasonable for the phase modulation there. Uh, so that's all looking pretty good. So it looks like we really haven't, um, there hasn't been any sort of major damage. Now I can't test the IQ part of the system because I'm still working on fixing the uh, E4406A. Um, but at least it looks as though uh, the basic you know, usability of the device uh, uh, is, still, uh, is still working. So let's uh, crack it open and replace that part. Okay. So here we go, and we can see the, uh, you can see that it has a little uh, diagram showing you how uh, things look, where things are, uh, on the daughter boards, which boards are there. Uh, you can see the cables coming in from the items over here to here. So let's just take that uh, top cover off. Okay, so there we go, you can see the cards installed uh, in here, motherboard, and then these cables from the front are running over here to, oh, bashing my head to various uh, connectors down there. So all we need to do is work out where it's going. So the, we should be able to, should be able to find out which one it is by just reading the tags up here. Mm -hmm. And it implies that there's, ah, here we go. So it's going to be blue, so it's going to be that guy down there. So, it's supposed to be the data generator board. Anyway. That looks like all we have to do is undo the nut here, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so we're now starting to just follow that cable through. So I have the connector out, so let's just undo clip that for the moment and then just pop that cable out of that bunch and then bring that where is that it's going. so with it. Okay, let's pop that through there and then back in under these guys here. We'll undo this little cable tie and then we'll be right with that coming down to the blue one. Yes, we were. Okay, so now we should just be able to pop that guy off the the motherboard there. And there we go. Now's the moment of truth to see if they actually sent me the right part. And it certainly looks like it. So let's take that little blue marker and we'll put the little blue marker back on the cable here. And 
now let's see if we can just pop that back in there. Let me There we go. Okay, so let's take this cable, thread it back through the system there, back into the clips. So let's just spin this around. Drop that in there and then clip back together. Drop that in there. Put that in there, clip back together. Put that in there, clip back together. And we'll drop that down through there because it's going to come, we have to poke it through the bottom. And let's lift up this, there's a clip here at the front. There we go. Now I can put the washer and the nut back on. Okay. And we have our item in here. So let me just tighten that down. Okay. Nice. So there we go. And you can see the, the damage they did to the connector you know, where it's just blown through all of the, you know, it's driven through the side of another case there. Let me grab a BNC cable and just test that all those front connectors are all fine. So the new one, yep. Data clock. Yep. It's a little pricky, but the inner connector looks fine. Yep. Okay, so that baseband set of inputs is good. There you go. So, overall, nice little quick fix uh, to get the unit running. I won't show you putting the, the cover and everything uh, back on, but uh, uh, this was uh, quite a good pickup and it seems to be in pretty good, uh, pretty good condition. So. I'm going to go have to grab the spec sheet, uh, even for all of that transit, you can see all the marks and everything, you know, they certainly built this uh, thing with a lot of uh, uh, strength to it, to put up to just being strapped to a, um, a pallet, you know, man, I can't believe that. Anyway, um, we'll uh, hopefully be able to use this when the E4406A uh, uh, repair finishes, because then we'll be able to see the uh, IQ constellation and throw some data and show it coming across, and then maybe look at some of the data uh, analytics software that you can get with uh, that E4406A. Anyway, uh, hope you uh, enjoyed just a little bit of checking on this unit uh, and uh, the little bit of repair. Anyway, I will catch you again later.